Job chapter 3. He's lost his animals. He's lost his children. Wife turns on him and leaves. He's in pain from head to foot. We leave off in chapter 2, verse 13. He's sitting on the ground for seven days and seven nights. It says that his grief was very great. After seven days and seven nights, after this, opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. Now you run that back to chapter 1, verse 4. Remember it says... All the children met on his day. You run this chapter here. That's a birthday. The scripture with scripture will answer your question. Isn't that great? That when you, you go in churches today. And we got a birthday for this person. That's everyone saying happy birthday. And Job and Jeremiah are two men, godly men, used by God, who God spoke to, cursed the day they were born. And you've got to admit, as we read what Job says and, and what Jeremiah says, listen, when you're born, guess what? You're born into trouble. I mean, what, what's happy about it? To realize that when a woman gives birth to a child, male or female, that child one day will populate heaven or hell. And I don't care if that child it lives underneath the bridge for the rest of their life. Or if that child has all the money in the world and everything given to it in a palace. That child is going to have pain and sorrow and misery and troubles. Let the day perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in shall not perish. He doesn't even want that, birth, that birthday to happen. Wherein I was born. See, birthday. And the night in which it was said, there is a man child conceived. The birth announcement. Job's mother, I, I, I'm pregnant. He's like, don't even say it. And you got to remember, as we're reading the Bible, for Job, back in B.C., before Christ, there is no second birth. There is no, ye must be born again. He lives in the age of the Old Testament where there is doubt. There is unsecurity of his soul. And even in the law, they had no security of salvation. The Holy Spirit came and went. It did not abide like it does in us today. The guy just lost ten children. He just lost everything. He just got cussed out by his wife. Don't call the man a fool. Don't yell at Job for being like he is in this chapter. Because we left him in very great grief. And don't say, I would do better than Job. Maybe Satan will return the favor. Better be careful. Let the day be darkness for him. Let not God regard it from above. Let God not write my name and keep a book. As we're reading about Job in his book. From above. Neither let the light shine upon it. He's talking about birth itself. The time when that baby comes out, it's all darkness. There's no light. And he's, when we go going through this thing, he doesn't even want to see the light. Of the world, I'm saying. The, the, the sun, candles, the moon. He doesn't want, he did not want to live, being the, being the state he's in.
Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. That shadow of death, that's something, that's, that's going to be an event in the tribulation that's really, we don't understand what it is. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Not only is it a tribulation pa passes, but there is some kind of, when death comes, there is a shadow or something. Now you can just run the scriptures, but you, unless you died, you can't say what. And don't say these people that come back to life. And, I've seen that. No, you were on drugs. They drugged you in the hospital. I wouldn't listen to anybody like that. I'd go by the scriptures. Jesus Christ is the one that made life and death. I'll listen to him. Let a cloud dwell upon it. That's another. Weird, um, as I'm studying the book of Isaiah, there's something weird with a shadow of death and a cloud. Job is not only speaking, he's in pain and sorrow. He's not only speaking of his pain and sorrow, but the Holy Spirit's coming in and he's speaking of the tribulation period. When those Jews are going to be running from the Antichrist to sail at Petra. 42 chapters, 42 months in pain and sorrow with Satan at their heels. You're going to see Satan get into these three friends off and on. Satan's working on them right now. You say, what should what should a Job do instead? I don't know. He's angry. He's upset. He's in pain. He's in sorrow. To him, yes, it looks like God did it all. He does not know chapter 1 and chapter 2. He did not, like we don't see what goes on in heaven. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. Death. As for the night... Let darkness seize upon it. I was born in a day, maybe, and that night, it never had happened. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Now look at that. Now my Bible says, B.C. 1520, and you do something today that is in the book of Job, chapter 3, verse 6. And in the King James Bible, I don't even know what perverted Bibles do, but you have to believe the Bible. In that, for a birthday, you got the month, day, and year. So how do you record the birthday? Month, day, and year. Right there in the scripture. You got years and the number of the month. You got the formula for writing out your birthday. That came from a Bible. I love pointing out things that come from the Bible that people do. They don't even know why they do it. You read your Bible. Lo, let that night be solitary. The night that, in the first night of his life. Let no joyful voice come therein. I mean, it, it, a baby's been born. Little baby Joe's been born. Yay! You know, friends in the village are coming in. You know, the, the men have been working all day, and they get the news. They come over to Joe's father's house. Yay! Celebration. Ah, the boy. You, you got a baby boy. Yay! And Joe's like, no. What are you celebrating about? Life is miserable. You know, these people, happiness, love, and... No, it's not. Show me where there's happiness and love outside of God in, in the world. 
One guy steps out of a lodge meeting and gets his life totally battered in by two other people, allegedly. I got to throw that word allegedly in there or else somebody will try to sue me. All the stuff that goes on in this world today and has going on. Love and, 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 and uh, that the United States government back in the 1940s and 1950s were testing atomic bombs in the deserts of New Mexico and all their citizens are getting hit with radioactivity. Oh, so sorry. Intercontinental missiles, submarines, machine guns. Love, life is miserable. You go over in Asia, your country sends you over to Asia, and you get you get a prisoner of war status. You go to the doctor, just for a routine checkup, or you had tests, and he tells you, boom. Only, only with God and Lord Jesus Christ as a born-again Christian is life wonderful and lovely and, and merciful. But guess what? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Wake up and read Fox's Book of Martyrs. When they'll take a Christian woman, throw her in a bag with a snake and a cat and another animal, tie the bag up and throw it into the river. And it's doggy eat dog. Or try, in one afternoon, four events are tragic. And then now you're sitting there with all these sores from head to toe. Let them curse it, that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. Job says, I, didn't even, I don't want that 24 hours, that my first life. Why? Why would he be doing this? He's saying, listen, if I've never been born, I would never be in this spot. Here I am today. Long ago, if I would have died, I would have not been here. And don't go pious with me saying, oh, what a tragedy. I would never act like this. No, you would. This is human nature. Job is a human. But in all his talk, Still, Satan does not get the victory because Satan said, you know, if you touch his, his bone and his flesh, he'll curse you to thy face. He's not cursing God. Get that in chapter 3. He's cursing his conception, his birthday, and Satan's sitting there like, God, curse God. And Job's doing everything but. So Satan loses that battle. Today, us humans, and I include us, as in me also, when something little in our life, unlike Job, and God, why do you do this? Why did you do that? That may be cursing God. I don't know how far that comes. See, you know, we think of curses, you know, four little four letter words. How about blaming God for something he never did? Or blaming God for something that you did that he's doing to correct you? Imagine a child doing something wrong, father takes takes the paddle to their little behind. And they turn around and say, what did you do that for? And 
And the Bible says you're to honor your father and mother. Isn't that interesting? And he does not blame God at all. All he wishes, the only thing he wants is, I wish I never lived through this. That's what he's saying. I wish I had never gone through this day. Or at least God, if he would say something with God, at least God, you could have prepared me for this. I mean, I... Like I said, only thing today I could think of something as, as like a, as a weather phenomenon, like a tornado or a tsunami that hit in Japan. I mean, one minute everything's happy, and next minute your whole life is gone. And now people in Japan are sitting radioactive. Uh, verse number 10 because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb now you know there's no doors it's being figurative I'm saying that door should never open light nor hid sorrow from my eyes see there's a there's what it is I'm in sorrow. He's got sorrow of pain. He's got sorrow of loss. He's got sorrow of confusion. He's crying. I'm on this ground crying. I I don't want don't want to be like this. Why died I not from the wound? See at that point it says sorrow for my eye. He's come to reality. He's, he's, he's back to sitting on the pile. He, he's, he's looking at his sores. He's scraping. He sees his, his four friends over there. There's actually four. Or maybe he came along later, but there's at least three friends there. He's looking at them. They're you know, you, 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 this ever been in a situation where you're sitting there and you, you think people are just staring at you and disgust? You can just picture those three guys looking at him like, you know, they don't want to be near him. They're afraid he's catchy. Uh, they're listening to him blabber on now. They think he's a fool. The rest of the chapters in the book. In the book. And Job's come to reality. He's sore. He looks over the horizon maybe and sees the smoke or the graves of his children or whatever it is. And he's like, sorrow. Why died I not from the womb? After all this, Job's reaction to what happened is, why did I just die? I would never have to live this day. And I don't think he's think I do not think he's thinking suicidal. He's looking at life like, hey, if it never if I never lived, I would never be living this. Why did I not give up the ghost? When I came out of the belly. Why did the knees prevent me? Now that's a birthing way that women would do it in the Orient. America always does it wrong. I've studied this here with, with, the, with the woman kneeling. And the way that, that Americans do it in a hospital, childbirth, it, it's the worst way to do it for a woman. This is the right way. There's, there's another way that uh, a woman in a, in a pool of water. It's another, I don't want to say natural evolution. It's a, it's a less painful state for a woman. It's trying to be, it's easier. I put it like that. Why the breast that I should suck? Why is there life? Life comes from mother's milk. That is the first life for, for, a, for a young baby, an infant. He can't swallow a steak. He can't have a, a milkshake. He can't have a Coca-Cola. Especially back then when there was no you know stuff like that. Mother's milk, life, nutrients. Why did I get all that? 
Why did it bother my mother to go through the pain and sorrow and me feeding upon her? What for today? And if Job's mother, well, we don't know, but Job's mother would still be alive, her grandchildren are dead. Mama, you gave birth to me in sorrow and pain and suffering, and, and you did everything. You gave me nurturing. You took care of me. And here we are. If his, I'm just saying, I don't know, if his mother would have been there or alive, here we sit. My children, your grandchildren are dead. And your little boy is in extreme pain and sorrow and suffering. Why? That's what it comes down to. Well, that's what we say to God when troubles happen. Why? Why? And there are times when, you, when you've been so struck by something, you probably want to die. Mean person you are. You want to die. No, it's scripture. It's found in Job chapter 3. Don't condemn the person. It shows they're human. They got human thoughts. They're right. As far as human. It's natural. A lot better than Job taking a sword and killing himself. That would have been unnatural. For now should I have lain still and been quiet in a grave. I should have slept grave. Then had I been at rest. No troubles, no problems. <coughs> yeah, true. But he would never enjoy his children like the times that he had. He was a good man, we know, by the book of Job. I mean, he wasn't a, a, an overlord over his servants. They, they cared about him, and he cared about them. Job had good times. And God was pleased with Job. I mean, God spoke to Satan and said, Listen, this man is perfect, upright, and choose evil. He is known by God by name. But Job doesn't know that. He's thinking now, right now. He's not thinking back then. He's not thinking ahead. He's thinking right now, as every Christian should do. You don't look to tomorrow. You don't look back. Right now. With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves, I mean, here are these, these palaces, here's these rich homes and all that. And one day they'll be empty. You go over in England area and all that, or the Great Britain and throughout Europe, you'll find all these old castles. They were built for a reason, they were built for a purpose, and today they're just old. Maybe tourists go through them every once in a while, but they're empty. A lot of money, a lot of effort went into them. You take the pil the pyramids, the the pyramids, and what what are they being used for today? Those things were great science advances of, of all times, and they're just sitting there. Few few archaeologists and scientists will go through them, but or with princes that had gold, had gold, had. You can't take it with you. Who filled their houses with silver. Fortunes. Or as in hidden untimely birth. So untimely death is in the Bible. It's a Bible word. They, they died untimely death. You got it out of the Bible. You had to get it out of the Bible. That's a... That's, I mean, that is a weird word to describe death untimely. 
in God's eyes, it was timely. You ever know that? God has a set date for all of us to die. But we call it untimely. We die before our time. Untimely birth had I untimely birth I had not been. As infants which never saw the light. So Job is saying right there, inside the womb, he's, he was a light. You want to go about abortion and all that. He's saying, listen, other than life, what would there have been? Death. <laughs> Even inside his mother, had there been no life, it would have been death. So there's life in the womb. Or death. Well, you can't die if you don't have life. So, when it comes to Dr. Rockman, what great things he teaches, he's wrong on that account. Because Job said, I, I, I wanted to die in the womb. I can't die if I don't have life. I don't think, I know Tracy's got over it with cancer and all that. When the cancer's been whipped, I don't think they say it died. I don't think that's how they describe it when the cancer's gone. Yeah, cancer is, is something alive in your body, but it's not like, you know, boom, here it is, and you take care of it, and it grows up and beats a big cancer. Unlike a baby. It begins off tiny small and it becomes a human life. There the wicked cease from troubling. And there the weary be at rest. He's saying right there is a very true statement there. And you probably missed it when you when you read through it. You know what he's saying right there? And I'll apply it to a Christian. When you're in the grave, you don't sin no more. And that's a true fact. The only way you will be 100% complete and perfect, 100%, is for a born-again Christian is two events to happen in your life. One, you die. Or two, you're raptured. Then, if you're to die or be raptured, you don't have to worry about sin no more. That's it. It's gone. Like I said, with Dr. Ruckman, things he, I like the thing he said. When we get to heaven, you'll never have to think about what you're going to say. You'll never have to think again before you react. Because everything will be right. Everything you do, everything you say, every thought will be always right. Not today. And the weary be at rest. Well, in the grave you don't suffer no more. Unless you, now here's where Job's wrong. See, Job's not spirit, Job is not speaking spiritually now. Spiritually, the weary, if he's lost, oh, he's not at rest. Ask the rich man in hell. Is he at rest? No. So Job does have it wrong. If you die out of the grace of what God has provided for the time period you're living in, you will suffer trouble and you will be weary in hell. For the born again Christian, your sins are done. Paul says we sleep. For the born again Christian, your death is no more pain. No more sorrow. 
As a born-again Christian, you will never need pain medicine again when you die. And you have trouble sleeping? You'll get the sleep you need. And then when the worms and everything eats your body, you don't feel it. There, the, the prisoners rest together. People who have been in jail. A graveyard is a big resting place. If you're saved. If you're lost, it's a place of suffering, sorrow. When I did that funeral, when I spoke to all the people there, I said, you look around this graveyard right now, I said, everyone is a Bible believer today. There are some people laying here that are rejoicing to be here, waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. There are some here right now are wanting you to hear the gospel while they suffer in torment. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. There's no more oppression unless you are in hell. If you are a born again Christian and do right, the day you die, Satan is no more worried about you. Satan will never come after you again. For the born again Christian, there's two ways to get Satan off your back. I don't even want to mention the first one. Just drop out of service. Too many have done that. Number two, die. And then Satan will never be worried about you again. Don't you think the sa Satan and the, and, the, and the devils in hell rejoice the day that Paul died? Don't you think they had a party? Even though he went to heaven, he didn't go to hell. They rejoiced. The small and great are there. Go to any graveyard. There's going to be the poorest pauper to the richest man. I mean, you ever see there are stones? I mean, there's these little broken little stones or maybe no stones. That graveyard that was in, in the, the trailer park we live in, there's, it was this tiny little stone here. It just said servant girl. We don't even know her name. And you go to the cemetery, these big mausoleums and stuff like that. Well, you're both dead. And it's probably sorry. You're probably both in the same spot. For broad is the way that leads to destruction. I don't care if you don't have a marker no more for your graveyard or, or you got a mausoleum. Listen, if you died outside the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're burning in hell. And the servant is free from his master. No dead servant is serving anymore. Job is telling in his complete sorrow, in his, in his anxiety, in the pain that he's having, he's speaking the truth. He's defending death. <laughs> He's telling you, this is why I want death. <laughs> Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery? Isn't that, what, isn't that what everybody asks God? Isn't that, well, why would God, you know? How about the light of Jesus Christ? All men are in misery. I don't care who you are. You need the light of Jesus Christ. Even though yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution, if you got the light, if you're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you may have misery here, but in your death you won't. And in the judgment seat of Christ you won't. In life unto the bitter soul. Why give life to someone who's in bitterness? That's what he's saying. 
And that's the question in the book of Job. Why continue having someone live who is suffering? What is the purpose, God? And I told you, for God to get them right. Whether they be saved or lost, need a Savior, or they're saved and they need to be corrected to get the right way. God wants all man to do right. You say, well, why did God take this preacher who has this church, who loves the Lord, does what he's supposed to do, and he leaves this wicked man over here alive? Because he wants the wicked man to get saved. The preacher's already saved. The Bible says in Psalms, it's a joy to the Lord, the death of his saints. The preacher went to heaven. That, that miserable little wrench that, that you're talking about will die and go to hell. You say, well, why is there some people that don't suffer misery? God is long-suffering that none should go to hell. And by the way, in Revelation 9, 16, there are people who are going to want death. They're going to want to die, and the Bible says they cannot. I've always pictured, I've always used the illustration, and it seems to work. You get a guy who goes all the way up to the top of the Empire State Building, out to the observation deck, cuts the bars and whatever is away, and jumps, lands on the streets of New York City, gets run over by 45 cabs and two city buses, and he's laying there in the pavement, and he opens up his eyes like, Ouch. That did not work like I wanted it to work. And then here come one of those little those, those weird things flying around and stabs him with, with the tail of the scorpion. Yow! He runs all the way back up to the Empire State Building again, does it again, gets run over by 35 cabs this time, and five city buses, and gets stabbed again, and he cannot die. Which long for death, but it cometh not. And dig for it more than hidden treasures. He just prophesied Revelation 19, verse 16. If somebody really wanted to die, they can do it today. You say, what about these people that go on these bridges and all? And you know, if they got talked down, they did not want to die. That's plain and simple. You may not like that. I don't care, because if they really wanted to die, they would have been in the water or wherever that bridge is. Uh, what's over that bridge? They needed somebody to talk to. They needed somebody to lean on because they thought they were lonely. They thought no one cared. They were just reaching out. Is there a way to reach out? But had they come to that final point that, hey, I'm on, this is gone. They, listen, they find bodies out there all over and they can't explain what happened. And if it's that person, if, if no outside interference, that person wanted to die. And it's tragic. It's very tragic. But when you take Revelation into account, Job is a prophet. You know what Job's telling you? With the pain and suffering of Satan going out to Jews. Now this is what Job's telling you now. Let's jump off him. Let's go into the future. Let's go into tribulation. Job is saying there are going to be Jews out there. There are going to be people out there that are going to want to die. They're going to try to die, and they can't. That's the misery. You go over there and read where those things come out of that, that, that pit there, and they got the scorpion tail. I think it's six months, seven months of, of pain after they're stricken. Meanwhile, with hail coming down and no water to drink but blood and all those, those, those trumpets, the vials and the seals and the three woes. 
And if you're a Jew, you can't receive that mark. Then it's going to be the guillotine. Or you run down the cell of Petra while Satan is chasing you. And you got the shadow of death, this cloud, that when you go get your manna, you're going to have to do it quick or that you're going to get whatever that death thing is. He's talking about the Jews in the tribulation as a prophet. Why won't God let them die? Because if it's his people, they'll die and burn in hell. Hid treasures. More than hid treasures. Didn't Jesus tell a parable about a guy who went and found a pearl and was hid in the ground? There's a treasure which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave. Now that's not true. You know how you know? How many funerals have you gone to and you've seen the body get up and start dancing around? No, 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 no. Especially that body, that soul is in hell. They ain't happy. Now if you're saved and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you die, you are happy. You are rejoicing. You've got your arms wrapped around the Savior. you got to look at it both ways. Why is light given to a man whose way is hid? Well, every man gets light from God, as much light as they want. And whom God has hedged in. He is, he's acknowledging, we read that God, Satan said, listen, you got him hedged in, God. He's saying, God, I'm hedged in. You know what he's saying? God, I'm hedged in. God, why didn't you prepare me for this? You couldn't <laughs> help me along. You've hedged me about, God. You protected me, and you didn't give me no light. That's what he's saying. For my sighing. Oh. Oh. Cometh before I eat. He sits down at the table and he looks at the table. He sees those empty seats. Oh. He walks by the barn. All the animals are gone. Oh. And my roaring are poured out like the waters. Oh, pain. Oh, how? For the thing which I greatly fear has come upon me. What? Destruction and death and suffering. Pain and loss is what he fears. He just told you. And that which I was afraid of has come upon me. Pain and loss. I put pain first because that's what really hurts you the most. No pun intended. I was not in safety. What could have stopped all this? That's what he's saying. What could I have done to stop all this? If I had the animals go out somewhere else, they would have died. Something would have happened. All these things happen for a reason, and he's not working it out, but he knows there, there's some kind of reason to it because had I kept the animals in, the wind would have blew the stables in, maybe. He's not, this is all for a reason, and no matter what, it was going to happen. No matter how much I had done to prevent it. Neither have I rest. Yes, he hasn't slept since this has happened. He hasn't been able to lay down. He can't. He can't lay down. He's covered with sores. 
can't lay on the sheet or anything because all that pus and all that's going to get on the sheet. Neither was I quiet. He just told you he's mourning. I mean, he's, he's moaning. He's groaning. He's, he's sighing. He's in pain. Yet, trouble, trouble came. And we'll get more into that as we look into Job. Listen, trouble, trouble's going to happen. And the worst thing you can tell somebody, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and all your troubles will be gone. Wow, that's a lie. Matter of fact, they may be doubled. So what we'll do is we'll leave Job like this. He's prophesying, so Job's a prophet. He's in a great deal of pain. He's in a great deal of sorrow. You expect him to be bitter. You expect him to be upset. You expect him to be wanting death. <coughs> death excuse me. What else do you expect from him? He get up off the ground, pat himself on the back, say, "Ha ha! I'm glad it all happened." No, that would have been a fool. And Job is no fool.